Hello, let's talk forces at an, at an angle and a few miscellaneous topics. Uh, so right here we've got a block having a force exerted on it at an angle. Now, uh, since we've got a horizontal surface, it's going to make the most sense just to get everything in terms of like a vertical and horizontal. Uh, so our first step is probably going to be to take this uh, 50 Newton force and find the horizontal component and find the vertical. Horizontally, it's just going to equal 15 times cos 35. And this would be 15 times sine 35. After we've put those numbers in, we got 12.3 uh, for the uh, horizontal component and 8.6 for the vertical. So now I'm going to draw a component diagram because I find those very useful. If I'm drawing this guy, uh, down I've got gravity, so that would be 5 times 9.8. And that has frozen my computer. Hopefully this is still recording, all right. We'll find out. All right, uh, so anyway, we got five times 9.8. That's gonna equal 49 uh, down. Now up, we've got this, I'm gonna call it like an Fy, the Y component of our force, and this can be our X component of our force. Uh, so upward, we've got our Fy, which is 8.6, uh, plus we've got our normal force, which remember is only gonna push just as hard as it needs to. And forward, we've got our X component of our 15 Newton force, uh, which is 12.3. And fighting that, we've got fresh, oh, I'm going a little, little wild. I didn't even finish reading the question. We're just looking for normal force. So forget all this, I didn't even need this one. Uh, all we care about is vertically, it's not accelerating up or down. Uh, so we'll just go with that. We'll say, hey, our up forces have to cancel with our down forces. Otherwise it would be accelerating in those directions and flying into the air or crashing through the earth, which it's not. The upside, we've got normal force plus that 8.6 we found as a component. And that's gonna equal our down force, which is 4.9, or sorry, 49. So, um, like if we subtract 8.6 from both sides, we'll find a normal force of 40.3. And that's it, which rounds to 40. And that's that one. Well, let's do this guy. Uh, in this case, we wanna know the net force on the wooden box. Mm, so to do that, we're gonna need to find both the horizontal component and friction. So this will be the full meal deal. This was kind of like the typical first step. All right, uh, so for this guy, again, we'll start it exactly the same. We want everything in terms of vertical and horizontal components. We've got 250, an angle of 32. So we're gonna find our Y component of our 250, and we're gonna find our X component of our 250. And once we have found those components, we will never use this 250 again, because we don't need it. We are only interested in vertical and horizontal components. Uh, so Y component would be 250 times sine 32. And f of x would be uh, 250 times cos 32. All right, so we found that our y component of this 250 newtons was 132, and our x component was 212 after we did our math. Uh, again, I'm going to draw a component diagram because I find them extremely helpful. Would recommend for pretty much any problem in this unit. Uh, so, pulling this whole thing forward, we've got the uh, X component, our F of X, uh, component of our 250. Uh, down, we've got our uh, force of gravity. Force of gravity is equal to M times G, which is 96 times 9.8. 
uh, which we'll find in a sec. Uh, we've got our um, FY, which we said was 132. And we've got our normal force. And we've got our force of friction. Oh, sorry, this is not Fn, this is Fy. We've got our force of friction. Now to find force of friction, we're gonna need to find Fn. And to do that, we will use the idea that our up forces have to equal our down, just like the last one. So we'll say our up forces equal our down forces. So we've got Fn plus Fy in the up column and uh, Mg in the down column. So do some calculations. Okay, so filled in some numbers. 96 times 9.8 was 941. So that's our force of gravity. Uh, Fy, we already found out a while ago, which was 192. That's the component of our 250 that's pulling up. And uh, so our up forces have to equal our down forces. We're just going to subtract 192 from both sides, and we'll find out that 941 minus 132 um, equals 809. So now we've got our normal force. Um, you might be asking yourself, why did we need that normal force? Uh, we're interested in the net force. And the reason is so we can calculate force of friction. Now, force of friction is always equal to kind of like how sticky the two surfaces are together, like their coefficient, uh, times how hard you're squishing them together. Um, so our coefficient of friction times the normal force. Our coefficient of friction in this case is 0 0.18, not super sticky, not super slippery. Um, times Fn, which is 809 newtons, which is no joke. Uh, which gives us a force of friction of 140, yeah, about 146 newtons. Now, we've got our backward force. We got our forward force. Our net force will just be our uh, X component of our 250, like pulling it forward, minus our force of friction, pulling it backward. Our big minus small. Net force is defined as just who wins by how much. And uh, 212 is winning, 146 is fighting it. Um, so that would be like 66, if I'm getting that right. Um, double check. Yeah, should be 66. 66 newtons. And, or I guess 67. I must have rounded slightly different somewhere. But anyway, you get the idea. Definitely that one. Uh, so that's the question. Break into components as we did. So we'll go break this into some lovely components. Uh, at that point, we never used 250 again. Component diagrams, always lovely. Uh, we had a battle between our X component of our force and our force of friction. Uh, but to find force of friction, we had to find normal force. And to do that, we had to realize that our up forces are canceled by our down, because this is neither flying up into the air or crashing through the earth. So we made our up forces equal our down and uh, then used our normal force, uh, which was the result from that calculation to calculate force of friction, and then we could just find net forces, big minus small. So a few steps, but hopefully none of them are too terrible. The next guy, this one is uh, not a force at an angle, but uh, a useful thing to know. We wanna know the minimum horizontal force that will just prevent this five kilogram block from sliding if the force of friction between the wall and the block is 0.65. Now, a way to start this as in most questions is a free body diagram. And when I'm looking at this, I see this applied force F shoving it into the wall. The wall doesn't like things being shoved through it, so it will exert a force out, and this will be our normal force. Notice it is not up or down, it is sideways, because uh, normal force is always the force of a surface straight out of itself. Um, these arrows should be equal. Uh, downwards, we've got gravity as always. 
which should probably be a little less. And upward, we're going to have friction. So friction is equal to mu Fn. And Fn is equal to the supplied force. So force of friction equals mu Fn. But in this case, Fn is just equal to, like the wall's pushing back just as hard as you're pushing in. So in this case, it's just mu F. Uh, F being the force we're pushing on and what we're looking for. So this is kind of like a, yeah, just our force of friction thing. And then uh, we can use kind of our up forces have to equal our down forces to keep it stable there. Uh, to say that our force of friction, our mu times F, have to equal M times G. So it's a five kilogram block. So we got five times 9.8, which is 49. Uh, and that equals 0 0.65 times F. So F equals 5 times 9.8, which is 49, uh, divided by 0 0.65. Um, it's probably 70, it's got to be 75. So I don't even need my calculator, because dividing by something less than 1 makes it bigger than then this number, uh, and the only number bigger than that, is 75. So that's how you deal with this one. Love the free body diagrams and think her through. Uh, love your up equals down, left equals right when things aren't accelerating in those directions. Uh, some nice little tricks. Okay, uh, here's another question. We want to know what is the magnitude of the acceleration on the six kilogram block at the moment it's released? Um, now you can solve this with components. Uh, your left component is going to subtract with your right, and your two up components are going to uh, add up, and you could build a triangle and find the hypotenuse with Pythagoras. Uh, but this looks easier done for me with uh, cosine law, so that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to draw them tip to tail, and it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm going to start with the one on the left because I have trained to read from left to right, so that's just easier for me. And so we got 25 newtons heading off in this way. Uh, keep in mind, this is exactly the same as how you deal with this problem if it was talking about velocities or if it was talking displacements or anything like that. Uh, so we draw them tip to tail, my beautifully drawn arrows right here. And now I've got to kind of like figure out my angles. Because um, really, if I'm going to use cosine law to find this guy, to find the net force, um, because keep in mind, that's what I get. If I add up two forces tip to tail, the net force is from the tail of the first one to the tip of the last one. It works just like displacement. It's kind of the, the displacement was uh, net movement, and this is kind of like the net force. Uh, anyway, same thing. Uh, so if I want to find this angle, I will find this component, 30 degrees. Uh, looks like a Z. Uh, the angle this this arrow makes with the horizontal is the same here as it is there. Uh, I also know this, the 45 um, angle, uh, makes an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal. Uh, so if this is 30, this is 40. The total angle between them is 70 degrees. And then I can just use my cosine law, where my c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos the angle between A and B, or the angle opposite C. So I'm gonna say my F net, which is this side, which is my C, equals 45 squared plus 25 squared minus two times 45 times 25 times cosine of this lovely angle between them, which is 70. And then square root all that loveliness. And that will give me... All that gives me 43 newtons. And then it's a 6 kilogram block. And I'm looking for my magnitude of my acceleration. So I'm not looking for my direction. Which makes cosine law even more attractive. Um, so I'm just going to say acceleration is my net force divided by the mass which is 43 divided by six, 
which will give me about 7.2 meters per second squared. That's all I got for you right now. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you for listening.